Okay, so good day. It is the first lecture in Calculus 1. So let's begin. So for our first lecture, we have the limit of a function. So here's the definition of a limit of a function. So let f be defined for all x in some open interval containing the number e. With the possible exception that f of x need not be defined at a. We will write, uh, we read that term as the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l. If given any epsilon greater than 0, we can find a number delta which is also greater than 0 such that if we take the distance of f of x from l, so that is less than epsilon if the distance from x to a is between 0 to delta. So for the first example, let us use the definition of the limit to prove that the limit of 3x minus 5 as x approaches 2 is equal to 1. So the problem was need to get uh, so we need to prove that the limit of 3x minus 5 as x approaches 2 is equal to 1. So this means that for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta which is greater than 0 such that if we take uh, the distance from x to 2 must be le uh, from 0 to delta it implies that the distance between f of x f of x is 3x minus 5 minus 1 would be less than epsilon so to do that let us first write the conclusion so 3x minus 5 minus 1 less than epsilon and then manipulate this statement so we'll have uh, 3x minus 6 less than epsilon now factor out 3 we have x minus 2 less than epsilon and then dividing both sides by 3 we get absolute value of x minus 2 less than epsilon over 3 now in order for this statement to be true we will choose, so therefore, choose delta b equal to epsilon over 3. Alright, so in limits, we have a notion of a one-sided limits. So here it is, so if the values of f can be made as close as we like to L by taking values of x sufficiently close to A but greater than A, then we write uh, the limit of f of x as x approaches to the right of A is equal to L. So if and if the values of f can be made as close as we like to L by taking values of x sufficiently close to a but less than a then we write uh, the limit of f of x as x approaches to the left of a is equal to l so we have here the relationship between one-sided and two-sided limits so the two-sided limit of a function f exists at a if and only if both of the one-sided limits exist at A and have the same value. So that is, if we take the limit of f of x 
as x approaches a is equal to l if and only if uh, the left and uh, the left-sided limit of f as x approaches a is equal to the right hand limit of f of x as x approaches a okay so to have an example of a one-sided limit suppose we have a function that is zero if x is less than or equal to zero and one if x is greater than zero now as, uh, as we can see the graph of f looks like this x this is y so we have the graph so let's say this one for x less than 0 so let's put a hole meaning it is not defined at x is equal to 0 so if x is equal to 0 so this is the value so now if we take the limit of f of x so as x approaches to 0 minus the meaning uh, we need to get all possible values of x to the left of 0 so as we can see here uh, all the values of x from the left of 0 are negative so if we have a negative value of x so the answer would be zero this is zero now if we take the limit of f of x so as x approaches the 0 plus meaning we are looking for the values of x coming from the right of 0 so as we can see in the graph all values of x coming from the right of 0 would be 1 if we input to f so as a result the limit of f of x as x approaches to 0 minus is not equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches to the right of 0. Hence, we can say that the limit of f of x as x approaches to 0 does not exist. So we write it as this so dne all right so here are some theorems that we can use in computing limits so we let a be a real number and suppose that we have a limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l sub 1 and the limit of g of x as x approaches a is equal to l sub 2 so that is the limits exist and have values l sub 1 and l sub 2 respectively then uh, in limits we can distribute it to uh, the two functions so we have l sub 1 equal to l sub 2 so the limit of the difference is equal to the difference of their limits and the limit of the product is equal to the product of their limits and for the limit of the quotient is equal to the quotient of the limits and lastly the limit of the square root and truth of f of x so we can distribute the limit inside the radical sign 
So provided that L sub 1 is greater than 0 if n is even. Alright, so let's talk about continuity. So we have a definition here of a continuous function at a certain point. So uh, let's have this definition. So function f is said to be continuous at x is equal to c provided the following conditions are satisfied. So for number one, f of z, f of c is defined. Number two, the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. And for number three, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to f of c. Alright, so let's have this example. So, we are instructed to determine whether the following functions are continuous at x is equal to 2. So, we have here f, g, and h. Alright, so let's have first f. So, let us determine whether this function is continuous or not. So, by definition of continuity, we first do f of 2. So, clearly, we have the value 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. Or uh, undefined. So since this is uh, not defined, so we can immediately say that this function is not continuous at x equals 2. Alright, so for the second function g of x, so we need to show if this is continuous or not at x equal to 2. So let us first do g of 2. So clearly g of 2 is simply 3. Now for the second condition, we need to find the limit of g of x as x approaches to 2. So for that, we will use this function. So we have limit x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, x approaches 2. So if we just plug in 2 to x, we will get an indeterminate case. So for that, let's first manipulate the function so we can factor x squared minus 4 into x minus 2 and x plus 2 so that we can cancel out x minus 2 so to obtain x plus 2 and then if we plug in 2 to x we will get 4 now clearly g of 2 is not equal to the limit of g of x as x approaches 2. So hence, we can say that g of x is not continuous at x is equal to 2. 
Alright, so for the last one, we have h of x. So let us uh, show if this is continuous or not at x is equal to 2. So let us first find h of 2. So clearly, the value of h of 2 is 4. Now for the second condition in continuity, we need to find the limit of h of x as x approaches to 2. So we will have limit x approaches 2. So we have x squared minus 4 all over x minus 2. So as we can uh, notice, we already calculate the value of this expression. So the value of that would be 4. So as we can see, the limit of h of x as x approaches to is equal to h of 2. So hence, we can say that h of x is continuous at x equals 